Books and authors for 500, please. John Bunyan's dreamlike allegory of Christian's journey to the celestial city. Bob, what is Pilgrim's Progress? Yes. Books and authors for 2,500. If you've read his A la Recherche du Temps Perdu, then you know about the Madeleines. Proust. Who is Proust? Marcel Proust, Remembrance of Things Had. Yes. Could I have books and authors for a thousand, please? Answer there. The Cancer Ward, in his novel of the same name, is thought to be an allegory of the Soviet state. Bob. Who is Solzhenitsyn? Correct. Books and authors for 2,000? Some think his works, including the social contract, inspired the French Revolution. Bob. Who is Rousseau? Right. Uh, theater history for a thousand? Answer. In ancient Greece, plays about these goat-legged men were performed after a trilogy of tragedies. Bob. Who is Satyrs? Yes. Newspapers for 2,500? Answer there. This Cleveland paper has the largest circulation in Ohio. Dave. What is the plain dealer? Right. 17th century science for a thousand. Answer. About 1645, Athanasius Kircher came up with this device that projects pictures on a wall. What is the magic lantern? Dave, you select. Uh, Spanish cities for a thousand. Answer. Catalan is the language of this second largest city in Spain. Dave. What is Barcelona? Right. Uh, newspapers for a thousand. This Boston-based newspaper is circulated in more than 100 countries. Bruce, what is the globe? No. Bob or Dave? Correct response, what is the Christian Science Monitor? Dave, we go back to you for the Only next America for a thousand, please. Answer. Jean Nicolet, who arrived at Green Bay in 1634, was the first European to visit what is now this state. Bruce, what is Wisconsin? Yes. Uh, let's have Spanish cities for 500, please. The zero kilometer mark from which all Spanish roads are measured is in the Puerta del Sol in this city. Bob, what is Madrid? Right. Theater history for 500. The village of Oberammergau in this country is the home of a passion play first performed in 1634. Dave, what is Austria? No. Bruce, what is West Germany? Yes. Uh, newspapers for 500, please. Newspapers in Sacramento, Modesto, and Fresno share the name of this insect. Bob, what is B? Correct. Early America for 500? On November 11th, 1620, 41 men aboard this ship signed a famous compact. Dave, what is the Mayflower? That's right. And now our last clue in 17th century science. In 1611, Kepler published a paper on the six-sided nature of these weather phenomena. Dave, what are snowflakes? Snowflakes is right. And that takes you to minus 2,800. Unfortunately, Dave, it is not going to be enough. As you know, you finish in a minus situation at the end of double jeopardy. You will not be around to play in final jeopardy. But what it does mean on the good side is that you are going to be going home with $25,000 in cash. So congratulations on that. Thank story. you very much. It's working today, but there have been many days in which you performed admirably. And so in final jeopardy, it's going to be between Bob and Bruce. And again, I remind you, gentlemen, that whoever winds up with the most points will walk home with a quarter of a million dollars. So you're going to have to think carefully about your wagers based on your knowledge of this final Jeopardy subject. The 20th century. Doesn't that narrow it down? <laughs> yeah, it makes it, makes it a lot easier for you, I know. We'll be back with a clue for Bob and Bruce and for you at home who are playing along right after this.